Hello, welcome to part two. Um, we're tentatively calling this, um, what did we decide on? Uh, responses, no, orange, orange responses. Orange responses, yeah. and then some. And then some. So I'm Andre. I'm Kirsten. And she's my lovely wife. And we've got comments. I can't believe, by the way, thank you so much for all the responses yeah, thank you. to the first one. Uh, this kind of was more than I expected, more than we expected. Because pilots could be good, bad, or ugly. And I think we kind of hit on the good. And we're lucky because uh, we got very nice YouTube commenters instead of nasty keyboard warriors. So we appreciate you very much. So do you want to start with Richard's comment? I think it was you want to start with. Yeah, Richard um, sent, well, posted quite a long comment. Um, I'm not obviously going to read it all because there's a lot there. But um, he also agrees that the the whole orange, you know, peel the orange thing is just more it, it's not about the orange itself it's about the small gestures and what you can do in your relationships to strengthen it yep. and to do little things for each other and that I think was what the point was that we were trying to make as well um that if you're not willing to peel the orange in that moment it's about a bigger picture it's the small things that you can do for each other that just brightens each other's days and just reaffirms that you're there for each other to support each other in whatever it is, even something as supposedly silly as peeling an orange or, um, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so that was, yeah, that's Richard's main point, I think, there. This kind of segues, interestingly, I think, into our relationship in that I don't do the cooking, right? And it's not because I'm lazy, but because Kirsten's Kitchen is her domain. By choice, right? This is not a sexist anything. No. This is just fact. Would you dispute that? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> the kitchen is, yeah, pretty much my space. And, you know, there have been times when I've said to you, oh, come and do this with me or whatever, you know, come and stir something or chop something. But really, it's just for fun. It's not, yeah. you know, it's my kitchen. It's my space. <laughs> Also, because our hob is completely flat and it's built in and it came with a house, it's kind of hard to change that. Um, I don't cook on that thing because one, you know, centimeter or a couple of inches off your ring and part of your food is burnt anyway. And I wouldn't know that. And I'm not going to put my hand on the ring to find out. So just as what I, what I do instead of cooking is I'll empty the washing machine. I'll take the washing up in a big basket. I enjoy that. It's a silly thing. I empty the tumble dryer of its water because we have one of those condenser things and you, you know, I just tip it away in the bathroom. Those are kind of my jobs. I'll do, you know, bits of washing up if I need to. We have a dishwasher and I do mean a dishwasher, not my wife. Um, so that doesn't have to happen often. That doesn't have to happen often. Wow, there we go. But it's something I will do. Um, so the little things like that, you know, we've got two bathrooms, got to change a toilet roll and I'll peel oranges for her if she wanted me to. <laughs> Never asked me to, no. but I would. But that's, that's the thing. Those are the little things that don't really mean anything in the big picture of a day. But when you do them without, I mean, I don't think I've ever asked you to do any of those things. You just do them. And that means more than the big things for me anyway. I think that's what partners should do. I was going to say what men should do. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Partners should do things for partners. If you love and care enough about each other, uh, then these are the things that should happen, period. It shouldn't be a question. It should be just um, a thing. And it's not even a taken for granted thing, is it? It's just a fact, I think. Yeah, absolutely. There's just not an expectation, but just a willingness. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of think this sort of segues as well into how well do you know your partner? Because if I know she's having a bad day or she's got a lot on, I'm going to do as many of those things as I can quickly and easily and not even discuss it. It's done. But equally... The funniest thing I think happens in our relationship, and this goes back to my friend AK, who said uh, about you having an incredibly analytic mind, <laughs> right? This, yeah. this baffles me every week. She asks me, what do I want in the shopping? Because she does the online shop. And I say something, and she's like, I've already got it. And I it, just know. It just baffles me. I just know. I don't know how on earth. She, and I don't know how <laughs> I do that, to be fair. It's been years. Um. I, I cannot. <laughs> I mean, it's very rare that I ask you for something and you go, oh, haven't added that yet. It's funny. It's, I, we make a joke of it every week. We do, yeah. Um, I think it's just because 
I can sort of predict what you what you're feeling like or or you haven't had this in a while you're probably going to want that or you know we've been together long enough now for me to know these things which is also telling like we were going to tell them how long we've been together and how long we've been married well gone then because you're already good with dates we met on december the 2nd of 2007 and i asked you to be my then girlfriend on the same day yeah and you said yes yeah crazy <laughs> um do you want to talk about marriage? Marriage is good. Yeah. Uh, what? How long we've been married? And when? So we got married on the 18th of April, 2009. And... Not so even that's... two years later. <laughs> no, not even two years later. I couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's 15 years. Which is actually really... Because Jake was also born that year. is always a really easy way to remember it. Yeah. However old he is, is how long we've been married. And um, anyone who has a problem with anniversaries, just, you know, absolutely. you need to l link up things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's it's been a really long time. And I think if we'd been together this long and didn't know each other, or, you know, all the little things. You've got a problem. Absolutely. Yeah. That's weird. I mean, when I think about how long that actually is in terms of life experiences, that's a damn long time. And it's not even the longest I know, but it's long in my life. I mean, we were still babies, practically. What, you were 20. When we met, you were 21? Yes. Mad. That, that just goes to show. Yeah. Like, I snapped you up quick. <laughs> and we're old. And we're old. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We're going to grow old together. It's lovely. Yeah, it is. But, you know, um, a friend of mine on, on WhatsApp who didn't leave a comment on the YouTube, he was talking about... Um, peeling the oranges and stuff for his wife and he, uh, same kind of situation uh, he's blind and his wife is sighted and you know she drives and like me he wants to take his wife to places but it's hard to arrange given other commitments so he said to me like I'd love to take her to dinner but she's got to do the driving so it can never be a surprise and I just felt that's just I felt bad for him yeah and I feel I absolutely empathize with this because it's hard for me to get you out of the house on my terms because <laughs> there's always something to do so yes. i'd like to peel the orange metaphorically and take you somewhere nice and surprise you but it is very difficult to arrange because of that no and i get that and i can only talk from my perspective but i'm sure that other sighted wives sighted partners you know who um who have a similar setup to what we do it it doesn't matter it's not like I've ever sat there and thought oh I wish you would send you know do this big surprise and take me here there like obviously it would be lovely but it's not for me it's not a big deal it's not about that it, the little things are much much more valuable to me the you know taking the washing upstairs when I come home and it's up there and it's already done and dusted you know those things I value much more than taking me out to dinner or to lavish places, whatever it might be. Of course, of course, of course. But it's like the want to be able to do it and yeah. the inability to be able to do it due to circumstance. Yeah. And I think it would be really cool because I, you know, you, you see online all these people doing these nice things for their wives and usually they have a friend pick them up or get a car or something. But it seems like all of our friends live far away or yeah. don't drive or the only person that does drive is your mum. Like, yeah, it's, it's a funny thing. Well, that's because we live in London and cars are not always, you know, vital in London. So yeah. most of our friends don't have them or don't drive or, <laughs> you know. Or my dad lives across town. Yeah, true. And my brother lives in a totally other city. Mm-hmm. And Jake is not old enough yet. <laughs> no. But Give that, it time. Uh, yeah, the boy's going to be driving very, very soon. He's he's constantly said, oh, Dad, I'll drive you to your gigs and everything. So I look forward to that. Yeah. Then I can do all kind of fun things. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's mad. So we have been together a long time. We've metaphorically peeled a lot of oranges. We've got two kids. Happy married. And uh, I think in terms of, like, life expectancy and the things that we expect from each other. I don't think we have any problems, really. No, not at all. And we argue very little. Yeah. Which is good. 
yeah, very little. And I think when we do, there's usually... Meaning? It's, yeah, there's, you know, we don't tend to bicker or it'd be silly things. It's usually something that just needs to be aired, needs to come out. And once we've got it out of our system, it's done and dusted. Yeah. Um, we tend not to let things carry on for long periods of time, which I think is something that we've learned over time. I think maybe when we were younger, yeah. we perhaps would have argued more. There's no relationship manual, no PDF, like, don't no. do this, you know? And the do's and don'ts, even if you did, are different from other people. Do you remember the thing we saw years ago about uh, the way you sleep? Yes. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Different positions. If you're facing away from each other, it means that you're not connected um, Rubbish. as a couple. And, you know, all these, th analyzing all the different positions and ways that you fall asleep and how you sleep which is yeah like you said is utterly ridiculous because you sleep on one side and i sleep on the other side as in like i face one way you face another way it's just how we're comfortable it doesn't mean anything at all um i, I love these kind of blanket statement things if you do this it's this and if yeah. you do this yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous it's absolutely fun. ridiculous oh, um, God. because if we slept on different sides of the beds it would be the other way so you know yeah it's silly it's very silly but we have such a routine don't we like if we do go anywhere i'll pick the same side i do at home and you pick this some people don't have that yeah that's just weird that i, I find that very strange okay good it's yeah. not just me but you know that there are people who don't even sleep on the same side of the bed every night i can't no get out with they that. just randomly pick that means you would have like side each day my laptop and i'd have your hair dryer when i wake up in the morning and maybe it's people who don't have things next to their bed but still it just but that's like nomadic i can't do that you have your pillows they're your pillows <laughs> your way yeah that is odd it is very odd I, I i mean i knew that but i forgot it is very strange and even if i stay in a hotel overnight for a gig or whatever i'm always staying on my side i count it as my side it is your side it is my side definitely <laughs> even if you're not there <laughs> absolutely like when you went away did you do that uh, well, not this year. It was a single bed. <laughs> but oh, well, normally, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> no, it was fine. Um, but normally, yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I think. And actually, when we first met, we had a very similar setup to we do now, don't we? Because we had uh, we were back in uh, West London, and we had bedside tables in the same places. So it started there, I think. Yeah. And we just moved it forward, didn't we? Absolutely. We've lived in three houses, which is crazy. Yeah. Because we had the. First one, and then with the big block of flats, which had a great view. And now where we are here, with a garden. A very wet garden today. Weather. Wet and miserable. That's a very typically British topic, I the know. weather. We won't, we won't go into that. <laughs> well, no, they've got hurricanes in the US at the minute, with time of recording. So oh, okay. uh, stay so, safe out there, everyone. Yeah. It's, um, we'll count ourselves lucky it's just rain. <laughs> a lot of it. But, yeah. Now, I, I'm, yeah, it's funny. I love the tangents. So where were we? We were peeling oranges, Richard's dissecting Richard's comment. Were there any other comments that stood out? Because we answered, um, how did we met? Which was nice. So there is a little bit more about the orange. I think just most people are agreeing that, you know, in a loving, committed relationship, why would you have an issue with doing that for your partner? Um, you know, asking a simple request and you say, no, why is that? Um, so I think that's kind of it for the, yeah. For the orange as such. Um, but we did get asked about the sort of tactileness, I suppose, the, the cuddles. Yeah. About you being very tactile and, you know, wanting to hug everybody or, or not. I mean, that sounds really bizarre, but, you know, you enjoying hugging people when you first meet them or friends, family and all of that. And me being kind of the opposite. Um <laughs> And, yeah, being asked if I would grow to enjoy the cuddles. So I just want to say I do enjoy the cuddles with my husband and with my children and possibly with my family. We're not a particularly tactile family. so Don't there might your bestie. Be... Oh, yeah, my best friend, Kelly. Yes, we definitely. But that's all initiated from her. And I think I'm more than happy if she initiates for a hug. And I will now, but that's taken years of friendship to get to that point yeah um 
But anybody else, I'm not really, you know, this, it's just not me. All right. Let me carry on talking briefly. And uh, we have a tea spillage here, which uh, was unexpected. But uh, on um, WhatsApp, a friend of mine, Kevin, had said that it could be a cultural thing, whereas uh, he's Colombian and I'm from the Caribbean. And like the French, do the kissing thing on each cheek. It's possible that when you come from certain cultures, that is just how you behave. Um, and that is possibly the reason why I like to hug people. And my family have always been very demonstrative in that way. And Colombians apparently as well. But maybe, you know, the stiff upper lip Britishness means that that's not how they behave and that's how they're used to it. I don't think her family is either. I mean, her dad will hug me now. Didn't used to. Um, and her sister. Because they know that's who I am. And, you know, they haven't just accommodated me. It's just the way it's turned out. And that's absolutely great. I appreciate that a lot. But, yeah, it's an interesting an interesting thing. And um, when she's able to sit down again after tea cleaning, um, I would help with that. But, you know, I'm blind. I don't even know where it's spilled, to be honest. <laughs> You're fine. Um, yeah, so I, I'm just going to hold the fort down until such time as I no longer need to. What a mess. Literally, what a mess. What a mess. Okay, I'm coming back. Hold on. She's coming back. Oh. Okay. Sort that off to it. Oh. It's very embarrassing. Where did it go? It went all over the floor. It's oh, no. never mind. And it wasn't even the blind guy that did it. No, it was me. <laughs> never mind. Wow. It's very embarrassing. So um, did you hear what I was saying? I heard a little bit about what you were saying. Um, about a cultural thing. Because I never yeah. ever thought of that. <clears throat> it's a very interesting thought. I guess so. But I suppose my dad is... British, but on my mum's side, it's not. Yeah. So I don't know how that fits into a culture. Although I think my mum would be more tactile. I don't. I don't know. We're she just hugs not. Me. She does hug you. They all do. I don't think. But again, I think that's because they know how it is for you. Like yeah. they know that you appreciate that, and so they've grown to enjoy that. Yeah. Um. I don't think if I was married to somebody who wasn't. They would initiate it. Um, Do you know what? This is a really interesting topic in general because I have a thought. I'd love to discuss with you um, family acceptance. Because, you know, mm. you see a lot on, online and comedians, they always make jokes about mother-in-laws and family. Yeah. But I don't have to do that. My wife's family accepted me from day one and they've been absolutely brilliant. And uh, mother-in-laws never needed to worry about that. My mother-in-law is a phenomenal woman. And I'm not just saying that because she might listen to this. Like, <laughs> I love her. She's fantastic. She is. She's always been great. And, you know, when my mum was alive too, my wife got on with her too. Yeah, she was lovely. Your mum was never anything but amazingly loving to me. Right from the beginning. We were really lucky that we didn't have any problems. No. Um, but I think but the reason I mention it is because not every couple will be, of course, blind and sighted. And also a black and white mix too. And that can introduce its own set of complications. But I mean, well, I shouldn't have to say it. We live in the 21st century, but it still does in certain places. But not really for us. No, and I think that's, you know, a testament to our families, but also that we live in a... Ve <laughs> it's a doorbell kind of day. Oh, it's all about the interruption. Um, I would get it, but she's closer to the door. Um, I don't want you guys to think I'm just a lazy sod, but she has grabbed the doorbell. And uh, we'll carry on in just a second. This is how we go, though. You know, you'll get the nice edited cut, uh, but parts of this you'll be hearing as if it happened. Very package. Wet package. A very wet package. A very wet postman. <laughs> oh, poor man. Is that our usual postman? Yes. Mr. Um, no, he's great. I've lost my train of thought now. Oh, yeah. So we live in London, which is very multicultural, and I don't think it's a particularly unusual thing. Nope. I think if we lived... Um, you in a know, little village yeah I think it, it would be very different and our lives would be very different um, so I think we're lucky in that respect but no our, our families were um, more than okay they were it, it wasn't an issue certainly for for my family and um, like I said your mum was incredibly welcoming I think she was so happy actually because she said to me uh, long before she died that I can leave you in peace now. You're going to be looked after. And it was kind of prescient. Yeah. It stuck with me, though. It stuck with me. I think she could just see how happy we were. And I think that's the reason why 
my parents were, I don't want to say accepting of the relationship because it makes it sound like we needed their acceptance. It's it's not like that. It's just they were happy for us that you to were be. Happy. Yeah, th that's it. They could see that I was happy um, because that is something that my mum has mentioned that when we first got together, she could see how happy I was being yeah. in that relationship. So, you know, that's all you want for your children, isn't it? You just want them to be happy. Absolutely. So why have an issue if they are? That is a philosophical question. That, <laughs> but no, it's a good one. Yeah. If your children are happy, not doing bad things, can you as a parent, do you have the right to be unhappy for them just because it might not be what you would want for them? Deep. Mm. <laughs> I guess we have things like that to come as our children. Age. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. And I don't know. I think that's hard, isn't it? It is, yeah. But I think that's going down a different <laughs> different topic of children. And yeah, no, it, it, we can show that. You, we, can, um, we could discuss parenting, blind parenting, sighted parenting. Yeah. And another, another day, if you're interested, again, comments. And uh, you know what? I think we've come to a really good stopping point here. We, we've covered a lot. And I definitely need to go and sort out the big stain on the floor from the tea. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dear. You wouldn't have had it if you weren't recording. So no, I, I, I it's my fault. Oh, well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening to our second episode. If you got through all of it, well done. Um, and we'll be back. Yes. We don't know how, like, the schedule of anything. We're just kind of going as we go. We're winging it. Yeah, but are you enjoying it now? Because at first I think people thought, oh, I've ca cajoled you into it. <laughs> well, I think maybe you did a little bit to begin with. <laughs> but you were so happy and excited to try it, so I was happy to go along. I we'll did try see. We'll see. I'm not. I, I'm not. At, you know, comfort level just yet. But we'll. We'll see. We'll but get you're there. honest about it. Yes. And that's that's it's better than lying. It's just not something that I am at all used to. So you know, I'm so doing pleased, something out of my comfort zone for once. I'm so pleased that you've done it or tried it with me. That's great. Yeah. We'll be back. Bye. If, if if she agrees. Bye bye. <laughs> you reminded me actually because I forgot about that part of the conversation. But oh, tea. Yeah. Okay. You might need to stop.